Hello friends, welcome to another video tutorial from Shomu's Biology. In this series of videos, we are talking about the eukaryotic transcription. And uh, there will be two videos in the series. In the first video, we talked about the eukaryotic transcription initiation and the regulation of eukaryotic transcription initiation. While in this video, we will be talking about the eukaryotic transcription termination. Okay, And we will see why this termination is important and what are the events uh, of the eukaryotic transcription termination. Like every single processes in a cell, like whether it's a DNA replication, transcription or translation, they always need two points uh, for their journey, a start point and an end point. So same thing happens in case of eukaryotic transcription as well. If I draw the DNA, you know, one is the start site and the start site is the promoter. And actually, although I say start site is the promoter, start site is actually present few nucleotides downstream of the promoter okay because promoter is normally upstream that's why we call it minus 35 to minus 10 sequence and then the start side is known as plus one that's the difference between actual start side and promoter but we mark start side with promoter and further downstream of it we have the termination site this is the termination site in prokaryotic transcription the termination site is specific and those termination sites uh, is the place where they have consecutive GC rich sequences followed by AU which allows them to form a, a stem loop structure and followed by AU as AU has a weak bonding causes the dissociation of the mRNA that simple as it is and in some cases they also utilize a helicase known as Rho for the separation of growing mRNA from the template DNA. But in case of eukaryotes, the process is not that easy, it's a little bit complex. The reason behind this, because the mRNA produced from the DNA of eukaryotes carrying two important parts, introns and exons. Introns needs to be excised and removed out and exons should be joined. But not that's not the case. Because while the transcription is going on, they produce the transcript carrying introns and exons together. So they don't need to separate them during transcription. But one important thing that they need to do during transcription is at the end of the transcription, they need to add multiple stretch of adenine residues to the mRNA. That is the uniqueness of eukaryotic transcription. So let me write the features that we need to add poly A tail, tail of adenines at the end, 3 prime end. And after the transcription is done, they need to add 5 prime cap with the help of a guanine which is inwardly linked. So once the transcription is done, the mRNA transcript should carry a 5 prime cap and a polyadenylation at the end of the 3 prime. This is very much important. Then the process of uh, splicing will take place where the introns will be cleaved out, exons will be joined and all the modifications. But polyadenylation needs to be done at the end of the transcription itself. And also 5' prime needs to be protected with capping. Because it was found that without polyadenylation and capping, the presence of mRNA and the lifespan of the mRNA is not that big inside the cell. That's why it's very, very important to tag. And for the polyadenylation, we know they need several different types of proteins and factors involved at the end of transcription. So transcription begins at the start site and we know how transcription begins and the beginning is also difficult involving so many transcription factors together and allow the RNA polymerase 2 to escape the promoter. So now as RNA polymerase 2 just escaped the promoter and RNA polymerase 2 let's say is moving and ultimately reached that termination sequence and while RNA polymer is reaching the terminator sequence meanwhile it continue to produce a stretch of what I can say a stretch of till this point mRNA and the mRNA which is produced this is the 5 prime this is towards 3 prime it's continue to produce mRNA towards 3 prime now once the 5 prime is free the capping should be done right after the 5 prime is free but what about the termination and how exactly termination takes place that's what we want to understand today now at this particular point they have a specific sequence there 
and that sequence is known as not exactly termination sequence we call it a kind of polyadenylation uh, identification sequence so this polyadenylation sequence is a stretch of nucleotides which provides the information to the polymerase that the transcription is about to end okay so instead of providing any stop signal there is a signal that yes this is the time to add adenyl, uh, adenine residues at the end of the 3 prime end of the mrna and once you start adding adenine that means the transcription is at its end that's the signal so once they receive this signal rna production continues polymerase continue to move to the forward direction remember one thing that this rna polymerase have c terminal tail and in this c terminal tail of the rna polymerase there are two proteins attached at the middle point of the elongation that means once polymer is starting here somewhere at the middle two separate proteins linked and attached with this c terminal tail what are those proteins the name of those proteins are let me write it here one is cpsf c p s f another one is c s t f so c p s f full form cleavage and polyadenylation specificity factor and c s t f is cleavage stimulating factor these are the two proteins that are linked with the c terminal tail of rna polymerase 2 now the thing is whenever they find this sequence terminator sequence which is the polyadenylation identification sequence that sequence is transcribed and then what happens polymerase continue to move so soon once polymerase continue to move we know that the, the rna chain continues to to be lengthened so this will be the 5 prime and let's assume here that polymerase move forward as a result this was the site and the transcription is done for that reason of the the, the dna so this is the point of identification sequence of polyadenylation so once that sequence is transcribed then the cpsf and cstf is transferred from c terminal tail to the to that binding site so cpsf and cstf linked with rna now transferred from the c terminal tail because they are in close proximity so they can easily shift position now at this particular point they will recruit a type of endonuclease which are known as additional cleavage factors so among additional cleavage factors for different eukaryotes we have different examples and the name of those proteins are also different so i'll not recommend you to remember that but remember it these are additional cleavage factors and those are a kind of endonuclease so those endonuclease cleaves right after that position so whenever the additional cleavage factors are in place let me uh, draw so ad additional cleavage factor on its place causes the removal of cstf and it cleaves right after that sequence that's polyadenylation signal sequence so it cleaves from there so after this cleavage what happens the mrna is now free so let me draw the mrna at this particular position the mrna is now free and this was the identification sequence where we have cpsf attached cstf is re removed and the cleavage protein that is the endonuclease is also removed now at this position what we know that this is the end this is the 5 prime this is the 3 prime this is the end now once the cleavage is done once the cut is made by the endonuclease and additional cleavage factors then another protein is recruited that protein is known as poly a polymerase and this is very interesting enzyme because you know poly a polymerase can attach multiple adenine residues at the end of that mrna which is just cleaved without needing any template that's the beauty of it because rna polymerase dna polymerase they always need a template dna on which they will make another copy of dna or rna but in this case this poly a polymerase linked here let me draw the poly a polymerase and its position poly a polymerase poly a polymerase start adding multiple adenine residues at the end without 
requirement of any further template and from where it's getting the adenine from ATP so it's utilizing ATP and getting adenine from ATP to add multiple stretch of adenine so if it needs to attach 200 adenine it will use 200 molecules of ATP okay that's the process of attaching poly A at the end so while poly A is being added there is another important thing required that is the attachment of a third protein known as poly A binding protein or PBP so PBP protein start linked with this poly A chain why because you know as there is multiple stretch of A if there is multiple stretch of EU in the middle of uh, the mRNA actually they can form a secondary structure they can form a double stranded RNA which can be dangerous and they can give a rise to the formation of miRNA so those things will be difficult those things will be really problematic so to prevent that the the, the kind of single stranded binding protein those, those are these PBPs or poly A binding proteins uh, bind to the poly A and prevents the A to form a double stranded RNA okay so that's the process now the question is once continuous stretch of 200 250 stretch of adenines are added then the process continues and stops and the mRNA is now free because you know the 5 prime is already capped capping is also done in the 5 prime so that is kind of a ready of mRNA although they contain both introns and exons so afterwards we need to only add exons introns need to be removed with splicing that is the second job but this is the end of the transcription but another interesting fact is <clears throat> what about the RNA polymerase when it dissociates because we need to dissociate the RNA polymerase at the end of transcription as well so that that RNA polymerase can be recycled in the next round of transcription so who makes the RNA polymerase dissociated from the DNA now it was found out that RNA polymerase never dissociates right after the cleavage of RNA takes place because you know the cleavage of RNA takes place by the endonuclease activity of uh, additional uh, transcription and cleavage factors but polymerase continue to synthesize RNA for few stretch so after this RNA gets cleaved let me show you here after this RNA gets cleaved so let me draw this cleavage of this RNA it's, it's done it's over even after that polymerase continue to move and start synthesizing small stretch which is not necessary because you know the necessary portion of the RNA is already produced so that stretch of RNA that is produced at the end carrying no information or it's not carrying any codon for the protein synthesis but this they, they continue to synthesize unless they receive a dissociation signal and what acts as a dissociation signal one thing is that after the removal of this after the cleavage of the mRNA with the help of cleavage factors triggers the conformational change in RNA polymerase and that conformational change to the RNA polymerase may cause the RNA polymerase lose its affinity towards the DNA so RNA polymerase can come out this is one theory that after removal of the actual long chain of the mRNA conformational change and that will lose the affinity towards the DNA RNA polymer separation from the DNA but second uh, hypothesis is there is the newly formed a a mRNA that's being produced this mRNA lacks 5 prime capping so there is no 5 prime capping so as there is no 5 prime capping that is also sensed by the polymerase and you know RNA polymerase think that as there is no 5 prime capping there is no meaning of transcribing that mRNA so in that case polymerase also falls off from the DNA now between these two those two both are hypothesis so it's not a proven fact but the first one is pretty much something that we can all expect that at the beginning while the cleavage is done that sends a signal and changes the conformation of uh, RNA polymerase that will allow it to released or to be removed from the DNA sequence that's the idea okay so this is always a process of termination at the end and during the termination once the termination is done you will find a, a premature mRNA you can say but it also carrying a 5 prime capping a 3 prime polyadenylation but this maturation will take place after the event called splicing which will join the exons which are the codon units together and cleaving introns out that is a part of splicing if you want to know about splicing in details I recommend you to watch my video regarding splicing 
you will find it in my channel in the description as well as probably in the suggested video <coughs> to the right hand side so that's all about the eukaryotic transcription termination if you like this video please hit the like button share this video with your friends subscribe to my channel to get more and more videos like that thank you